can we take lessons from successful implementation of universal health care in, or, in order to prevent Obamacare from being unsuccessful or beyond repair? Thank you. I think that did that. Uh, that's a question I think that's for this side, so I'm going to let them take it. I'll let you give you a response depending on what they say. Uh, and if somebody has a question for this side, who's not getting many, we'd like to have some parity. Uh, Megan McArdle. Um, I think of it as sort of like the Autobahn, which is great, but I wouldn't necessarily say that you could just build that in the United States now. We already have a highway system. Um, and so looking at what another country has done with a really long history is helpful in the sense that you can, you can see elements that work, but that doesn't mean that we can have Germany's healthcare system. We have a different set of doctors and nurses and patients and all sorts of things. Um, and that's why I like the idea of a kind of very American, we're going to have the government ensure your financial losses after a certain point, but we're going to leave you out there as a market-driven consumer making choices about what sort of health care you want. Um, when, you, when you get sick. Uh, I, like to respond I, to that. I think that's exactly Doug the Cameron. point, it, and that is uh, if you don't like a state-run uh, kind of program, uh, then you, know, you, you don't like the kind of systems that are elsewhere, and you can say we're not the same, we're different, but it is interesting that every advanced economy uh, in the West uh, and some parts of the East has these kinds of programs, and yet there's something special about us where we can't seem, apparently, to figure out a way to do it here. We've got to have some special American take on it. So I think we probably can learn a lot. I think we probably can learn a lot from other countries. Well, you know, we, I mean, we have, look, we have a market that's much more Step fragmented, up. much larger country. We have people who want to exercise more choice in, in, in their benefits design. We have people who have higher expectations than what many people are willing to um, acquiesce to in other countries. And one final point I'd make is that the structures in Obamacare that I've talked about tonight, the narrow networks, the closed drug formularies, I guarantee you they're going to be showing up in your commercial plans in the next two years. These structures will not be confined to Obamacare. They will now migrate into the commercial marketplace. But Jonathan Chait. I, I, here's one way to tie this together. Is for years and years when you asked conservatives about national health reform, they would, they would say some horror story, right? They would say some man in Canada walked 100 miles in the snow and lost his feet because of the socialist horrors of, of Canada to come to the freedom of America and every Everyone in Britain has lost their teeth because of the, the, the NIH. And all these, you know, weird kind of mix of but anecdotes that's and half true, truths. Jonathan. And that was sort of like, that was what was like floating around out there. And I think what's happened here is that all these horror stories have simply migrated to the United States and now describe Obamacare. And they've kind of forgotten all about the horrors of socialized medicine. And the way that they understood national health insurance in these other countries is now the way they understand national health insurance in the United States in this very partial, anecdotal, kind of slightly hysterical way. I'm so, I'm so tempted to ask who in the audience is British and would like to smile <laughs> at us <laughs> right now. 